Okay, we'll call to order the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Pension Board of Trustees regular meeting Thursday, October 13th, 2016 at 1800 hours. Trustee Aronson, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Liberty and justice for all. Okay, let the record show all pension board members are present with trustee or director uh, Wisniewski joining by phone. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? I'm good. I don't have any link. Okay. Motion to approve is presented. All the, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Are any uh, review the July 14th, 2016 meeting minutes. page on our new business yes it's the request for the pension for Condon but then it says to approve the meeting minutes oh sorry it, okay we'll fix that just a typo okay yeah we'll delete it. okay so we'll be striking out uh, the April 14 2016 regular meeting minutes as submitted Did everybody see that you bet mm -hmm. okay. I think that uh, should actually be replaced with to approve of the pension for Kathleen Connor. Exactly. Yeah. And approve the pension. And that motion was passed. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. So we'll make that correction. Thank you. Anything else? Move the minutes be approved as amended. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Approve as amended. Okay. Uh, new business. Second quarter allocation report. And that's just for your review. Have the on these uh, expenses? We don't have the audit expense in here, do we? I'm sorry. On the on the it says allocated income and expense for the six month ending June 30th, 2016. Weren't we supposed to uh, get an allocation for the uh, audit? Um, that happens in we approve that. In November. Okay. So, yeah, so we send it in and then they send us a check. All right. I'd like to talk with you about the amount of that. Okay. Um, maybe the allocation of those extra costs. I don't know if it's $3,500 anymore. They did all that extra work. Mm hmm. That's what they charged us on the final bill was $3,500, and we were reimbursed by FPPA for that last year. Last year? What about this year? Right. We're yeah. always reimbursed in advance of the audit. Oh, okay.
Any other uh, questions on the allocation report? I'm good. Okay. That'll take us to the contact authorization form. That's just requiring signatures. Is that all that's for? That's all it is. It's, we have to update that every year for FPPA. Okay. So I'll just get your signatures after the board meeting and we'll be done. Okay. I'll take care of that. Any other new business from the board? Um, any old business? Any other business to be brought before the pension board? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, 1808. That was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want a break or just roll? I say we roll. Okay. All right, Doc, hang with us for just a second. Okay. Okay, now we'll call to order the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Board of Directors regular meeting Thursday, October 13th, 2016 at 1809. Director Barrett, will you read us in the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Thank you. Let the records show all directors are present. Director Wisniewski joined by phone. Any additions or deletions to the agenda? Motion to approve as printed. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, review the September 8th, 2016 regular meeting minutes. to approve as printed? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed. Okay, that will take us to financial matters. Alec? Uh, you have the uh, report for both July and August. Um, one of the things I noted in the, uh, in the detail for August is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we paid a total of $19,000 for the audit. Is that without the $3,500 or? No, that's with. 
So it was, they um, thought that it would be 16,000 for the audit and 3,500 for the GASB 68 portion. So it was 3,500 for GASB 68 and 15,500 for the, the audit. But it's in the, in the financials now because until it's reimbursed, it's going to show up as an expense mm -hmm. on the general. Right. Yeah. So so it's it's really fifteen five is what we spent for audit. Right. Because we were last November, it would have been um, it would have reduced it. So we're always a year ahead because FTPA does that in November and December. All right. Uh, we will approve then the expenditures for both July and August. Uh, for July, the expenditure is $192,909, and uh, I move those expenses be approved. Second. Maybe second. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, for August, uh, we have expenses of $226,393, and I move those expenses be approved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Aye. That's all I have. The draft budget. I think that you, are you going to cover the budget? I will cover the draft budget, yes. Okay. Um, and I, I'm going to be fairly brief on this uh, with uh, more, more detail available uh, next week prior to the, or next month prior to the uh, uh, public hearing. Uh, we do have uh, quite a number of things that are still really uh, up in the air. Um, we have a good idea on the property tax revenue that uh, it's essentially going to be flat going into next year. Uh, and uh, we are looking at um, ambulance revenues being down uh, quite a bit. <coughs> and, uh, hopefully with, by next month we'll have a better <coughs> picture of, uh, of this year ambulance revenues and how far they've fallen uh, so that we have a better number to plug in for next year. But uh, as you guys are aware, the uh, ambulance billing has um, been uh, running a little bit behind on their reporting to us on, on uh, their income. So that, um, and that you know, we're still really only have about half the year in at this point, but uh, again, significantly down. Um, in a longer term, we expect that to be uh, actually continuing to get worse. Uh, they're starting to move to a new program to, uh, for the Medicare and Medicaid funds that will probably reduce our um, uh, current our, um, uh, revenue uh, from those patients uh, quite a bit. And of course, the number of patients that we see on Medicare and Medicaid have slowly going up over the years. So that's been eating uh, further and further into the revenue. Do um, you think we're going to have to consider changing our formula at some point? Or are we just going to let the taxpayers pick that up? There, we can't really do anything about it, uh, unfortunately. Um, the, uh, they pay a flat amount. They, they have pay, a schedule and they just pay. They pay a flat amount. Uh, we can't collect anything further on right. that. And uh, unfortunately, unlike doctor's offices that can just say they won't take Medicare or Medicaid patients, we have to take them. So I assume um, this is true for all the ambulance services. It is. It is. And uh, um, there's, with the new program, it's actually, the proposal is that it's going to be uh, now funneled through the hospitals instead of uh, being paid directly. And we anticipate that that'll be even less revenue coming to us. Currently, uh, the share that they pay is somewhere around 20% of the bill, uh, if that. Uh, it's not even that. It's like 13 or so now. Yeah, yeah. it's really, yeah. Uh, so that drags our whole, our whole number down uh, considerably. Mm -hmm. um, Why would the hospital, through the hospital bill, we'll get less? Is, are they going to take a... An administrative fee? Or? Well, essentially, what the way they're changing this is instead of paying for services, the proposal is that they're going to give block grants, and so the money will go to the hospital, and then they'll pay out what they want to pay. So, you know, so we have to build a hospital, right? We would have to build a hospital, and um, 
there I'm not uh, you know I'm not really certain how that's going to be implemented or, or how soon it'll go in but if it does go in uh, you know we anticipate we'll have a hard an even harder time getting money out of them than we currently do out of the program so um, you know it's a uh, it's an issue that's uh, a lot of the EMS agencies are, are talking about now and they're starting to get together to, with the hospitals to talk about how this potentially could work, but nobody's got anything concrete in front of them to work with yet. So, okay. um, that, uh, that supposedly is supposed to start at the beginning of 2018, okay. but uh, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, benefits, wages and benefits are, are uh, we've got numbers in there, but those numbers were kind of uh, roughly calculated to, to get started with uh, looking at the budget. Uh, particularly, we don't have um, insurance benefits. Uh, we are having to change plans again because of the withdrawal of the medical insurance carrier from Colorado that we had used this last year. So uh, the, the pool that we work with is now back out to bid on uh, medical insurance, so we'll see what those uh, numbers come in. Is at. that that Colorado state special wide? district pool? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And likewise, um, workman's comp and uh, liability insurance, we don't have prices on yet. Uh, so those have all been plugged in with uh, a 10% increase going into next year, just to get a, a number on the on the um, uh, you know kind of on the budget, but. Right. Until we get closer, you know, that, that, that can account for a pretty big amount one way or another uh, in that. And then coming down, um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, capital and, and other kind of changes to the programs, uh, one is the inclusion potentially of the um, uh, paramedic trainee positions uh, for next year, which would be a essentially paying for their schooling and a stipend, which would be well below the starting wage for a firefighter paramedic, uh, including a uh, car for the fire marshal. And uh, what I'm looking at there is instead of, you know, spending sixty thousand dollars on another suburban outfitted with lights and siren and everything, is we buy a Subaru or something like that because it's a not going to be a non-responding position. Uh, mm -hmm. So that way they don't tie up one of the one of the vehicles that we currently are using for other things uh, to go out and do inspections. Um, and then 50% uh, of the cost of re in one of the ambulances, as we actually are a year behind our, our uh, scheduled plan on that, and they are starting to go up in, in mileage, so we need to get at least one of those started, um, getting the chassis replaced. And uh, that's pretty much what we've got in there uh, for for uh, the current um, status on the budget. So that 65000 is for the new chassis? Right? That's correct, yeah. You said half of it. Is that because it's going to go to the next year? Well, what we're actually hoping is that we'll, uh, we'll put that through <coughs> a RETAC grant. Oh, okay. And uh, those are generally are, um, they're generally get funded. Mm -hmm. So they would, the, um, the State Emergency uh, Medi Medicine and Trauma Council would pick up the other half. And, uh, you know, just about everything that uh, we put through that grant process has gotten funded, but that is a 50% matching right. grant. Are maintenance costs running higher than you expected for uh, they did again this year, largely because we had uh, the ambulance repair, which you know right. the, the deductible <laughs> comes out of that. Um, but our new our new equipment is all still under warranty. Yes, it is. So uh, most of it is stuff that gets broken rather than stuff that um, you know breaks itself essentially. Okay. So we've had a we've had a few of those kind of things that we've had uh -huh. to take care of, uh, and. Um, so that, that's running a little bit higher, but we're still well below where we were oh, yeah. uh, three or four years ago. And that'll just come and go as, you know, we have accidents or whatever that we have to fix. So you will be 
getting us revised numbers? As, as they come in, hopefully we'll have uh, quite a bit of the, that uh, finalized by the next meeting. We know that even now, you know, even at that November meeting, we won't have final numbers on a lot of things. Will we do the hearing in November? We'll do the hearing, but then uh, November or December, uh, we normally get the, the revenue numbers three days before the meeting in December. Mm -hmm. uh, and likewise with insurance renewals, we probably won't see them until the last minute. Um, and uh, so there'll be some adjustment between the public hearing and then, so assume that, you know, that we'll have a version two and then a final version in December. Okay. Do we actually have to set that here? By, yes. Okay. By, uh, by motion. And we just set it for the next board meeting? That's correct, yeah. That's now, didn't we do it in December? Sure. No, no the, the public hearing is in November, and then the final budget adoption is in December. Okay. So that will be the November 10th board meeting. Can you put that the date? Yeah, that's what I should. So why don't we have a motion to uh, set the, the budget hearing for uh, the 2017? Budget on the 10th at the same time as our uh, board of directors. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Budget hearing date is set November 10th, the regular board meeting. Okay. Is that it on the budget? That's it on the budget. Okay. Any questions for the chief on the budget? Not for now. Thanks. Okay. Um, then we can just go to your report. Okay. Um, the uh, uh, Jefferson County Emergency uh, Communications Authority, which is often called the E911 board, uh, did uh, pass a resolution to raise the 911 tax from 70 cents per telephone line to $1.20. And uh, their proposal with that will be that that money will go into funding the proposed uh, Jeffcom Communications Authority. Um, we uh, have put in a question, uh, both myself and a number of the other small districts, as to how that's going to impact what uh, will be charged for services there. The um, number that they had started working with prior to this uh, was, um, I believe, $46 a call, which uh, will amount to somewhere in the neighborhood of Fifty to sixty thousand dollars in our budget that currently, uh, you know, we're paying a very small percentage of. Uh, so that's going to be a significant hit if they continue to charge at that rate. Uh, but um, the Jeffcom uh, Authority Board will now, once that uh, 911 tax passes, you know, they will have the opportunity to revisit that forty-six dollars to determine if they're going to. Uh, charge us that full amount or if they're going to reduce that amount. I would hope that uh, they would go ahead and reduce that as they're going to have significantly more of their costs being covered by the 911 tax. And so they really should pass that savings along to the user groups as well. Uh, but uh, we don't have any, any answer back from them at this time. Um, the uh, Building repair, the, the water system is currently uh, getting repaired. Um, it is taking a while again, uh, just like always. And, uh, as they work on that, they've run into more <coughs> issues, but we anticipate that that'll be the last major repair uh, that we have uh, on the building uh, for at least this year and hopefully for some time to come. Uh, there is one more component to that, and that is dealing with the... Uh, the electrical and the water line up at the well. Currently, we're basically on an extension cord running up there, uh, so we're going to try to get that uh, that electrical into the ground before the winter time. And uh, we're also going to see if it's feasible to go ahead and get the the uh, water line replaced replaced at the same time because is that, know, the, is that water line on the surface? No, the water line is way buried. Um, but you want to yeah. repair it? It needs. We, uh, we were advised to repair it when they, as they've been, you know, pulling everything else out, uh, 
due to the, the age of the water system and how much corrosion there has been, uh, there was a strong recommendation that we go ahead and get that replaced before it fails on its own. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, if it did fail in the wintertime, you know, it could potentially be difficult uh, to deal with. Uh, but um, we're going to wait and see what the costs are going to come back and whether anybody can actually get it done uh, prior to the winter. But at the very least, we'll get the electrical taken care of for the winter and then uh, probably look at the, the uh, water line uh, next year. Okay. Okay. Uh, we are back up to full staffing with the exception of the fire marshal's position. Um, we have been interviewing uh, fire marshal candidates and uh, I think we're, we're looking at uh, making an offer to one of those candidates who is interested in working uh, in the position uh, part-time. Uh, he's a retired uh, fire marshal with uh, considerable qualifications uh, who's interested in, in just uh, having, having part-time employment. So that uh, hopefully will work out really well for us. And uh, then the ISO um, has been, uh, the ISO meeting and the review has been put off now until November uh, due to, uh, uh, they essentially had to cancel because his car broke down on the way here, so uh, so that's pushed back. What's his ISO rate? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other thing that's not in here, uh, we are continuing to work uh, with the Archdiocese of Denver and the county on the proposed uh, retreat center. And um, we did send back a, uh, another letter to the county saying that uh, essentially, you know, we think that the county needs to really consider these projects and what uh, infrastructure is in place uh, prior to, you know, moving large projects ahead. And specifically, at, you know, and I brought this up before, is that it's, you know, it is certainly the fire department, but it's also you know, the congestion on the roads and everything else that's uh, becoming more and more difficult, uh, you know, for our community to support. Uh, that said, uh, we did come to uh, some agreements that if the, the county does move forward, uh, there would be a number of conditions that we wanted to look at with that, including uh, making sure that the buildings uh, that we would be unable to reach with our existing equipment would be entirely, um, you know, non-combustible uh, construction uh, and uh, protected by sprinklers and, and everything else. And in addition, the uh, the archdiocese was uh, willing to consider um, a payment in lieu of taxes uh, to make up the additional uh, call volume that we'd have there and to pay for some of the additional equipment and training that we would need as we as we. Um, start to deal with that larger facility and some of the uh, some of the impacts there. We did also make some other suggestions to help uh, reduce the risk to the local neighborhoods as they certainly had quite a few concerns about the uh, about the use of the facility and about campfires and things like that. So um, you know our recommendation included uh, you know going with gas fire uh, gas fire pits instead of uh, fire uh, places um, to uh, you know, continue mitigating along their property to protect the neighboring properties as well as their own, and a few other um, things that uh, they had asked for. And I know the, the communities also have some other concerns that were not specifically fire uh, related, um, and uh, I know that they are the, the Archdiocese was uh, going to be discussing those after our last meeting, so I don't know uh, where that's all settling out, but. Uh, those were the primary uh, issues that we, we came up with. But in addition to that, I do want to you know make it you know make sure that we do stress to the county that you know that uh, continued growth up here is going to continue to be an issue uh, with uh, you know our ability to continue to provide services, and then again, obviously the other services that have to be in place. Um, you know, having looked at how. Uh, uh, 285 is now not backing up just on Friday afternoons anymore. It's starting to back up at a lot of other times during the week as well. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to continue to have issues with that. And that also impacts our ability to provide services. And, uh, you know, we've got to deal with uh, those traffic jams as well. Uh, so certainly we're, 
we are concerned and we're concerned about the you know the number of accidents particularly on 285 that have been generated over the last uh, couple of years so uh, you know we're uh, at a phenomenal number of fatalities on 285 this year and uh, I know that a lot of that is a combination of uh, excessive speed and, and excessive traffic on the highway. Well, th that can only be solved if they extend twitting the road to uh, Pine Junction. I would think that that would be the. <coughs> that's a big. That's a big. It's a huge project. Big project. And I'm I'm not sure what they can do other than that. But uh, you know we're we're reaching that point where I don't know that they'll have a have a choice but to do that. Uh, you know, there, and CDOT's, uh, you know, take on this particular project is that adding, you know, 300 cars a day uh, during, you know, during their, their time when they're coming and going isn't a significant impact, although that does work out to about 1% increase on the traffic currently going through, uh, you know, basically through this section of the road. Um, but on top of that, you know, we've had, um, you know, the, the uh, Staunton State Park has had record level attendance uh, pretty much every weekend day. They keep breaking their records uh, with... Is that contributing know, to the backup? I, I think everything is. All the recreational traffic that's coming out. Um, you know, we've got 500 cars a day going in to uh, Staunton on the weekends now. Uh, you know, they're parking them on the sides of the roads in there. Um, you know, and obviously there's a lot of people that are just continuing on through to recreate in other areas as well. And uh, just, you know, every, every few hundred more cars that comes in, you know, just adds that much more to the, to the problems. But that's, a, that's a county problem. That's, a, that's really a state problem State there. problem. Yeah. Well, as long as we keep making our views known about that. I don't, well, my thought is that there won't be any solution to that in the near future. Whether that, whether that uh, archdiocese facility goes in or not. I, I, th I think you're uh, correct in that assumption. I mean, we're not, uh, you know, we're going to be behind the, the curve on the, on the archdiocese project for the roads, but we're also going to be behind, as we are currently, on our ability to provide firefighting um, you know today was a good example you know we had uh, you know a crew of uh, three people here today uh, plus uh, some folks that were doing some volunteers that were doing hub ed and they went out to uh, you know a wildland fire to help uh, Elk Creek and then we had a structure fire in a commercial building you know only a few minutes later and uh, we were really fortunate that the folks were doing pub ed that were able to break loose from that and come come assist because I was the only one at the station at that point. Was and, that the fire out on uh, 285? Yeah, there was the, they had a fire down in Shawnee, and yeah. then we had a dryer fire in one of the businesses in town here. So, you know, and that's happening more and more. That uh, you know, we're, we're just keep doubling up on our calls, and so you know, it's the chief mobile we call it. You know, <laughs> two of us take the ambulance. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I drive. Yeah, you drive. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any questions for the chief? All right, how about the deputy chief? All right. <clears throat> um, in uh, September, we had 109 calls, uh, five fire calls, 58 EMS calls, nine motor vehicle accidents, one hazardous condition, a gas leak, uh, 26 service calls, and 10 still alarms. We uh, got mutual aid. We received mutual aid from Platte Canyon eight times. Six of those were auto aid. We provided mutual aid once. Evergreen, we received and provided mutual aid one time. And then Inner Canyon, we received auto aid from them once. We had 47 patient transports in September, and uh, the average response time was 9.51. As summer's winding down, our uh, staffing and our training hours are coming up, as well as our average uh, turnout on call. We had 338 hours of staffing at Station 1. Our average turnout per call was 5, which is up 1 from most of the summer months and uh, 329 hours of training logged for the month. Any questions? Um, any new business from the board? Okay, 
How about any old business from the board? Any citizens' issues? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 At 1836.